the movie preview critic, informing and entertaining your movie world. What's up, good movie lovers? Welcome to Movie Night. Today's installment, Nightmare on Elm Street Part 4 specifically, but just in general, we're going to be taking a look at the whole Nightmare on Elm Street series, the franchise, and we're really doing this because the remake is just a couple weeks away, a remake that has been produced and overseen by Michael Bay, so whatever that means for everyone. <laughs> It might not be a good thing for Freddy, or it might be. We're going to talk about that. So, if you're a fan of Freddy, fan of the Nightmare series, and you just want to listen to a discussion about the current wave of remakes and kind of what that means, and then join me, the movie preview critic, for a movie night, along with my good friend, who you heard on the Total Recall commentary that we posted a few days ago. Nobody, He's, nobody heard that. Come on, come on, dude. People love it. Total Recall's awesome. Did everyone already unfriended me on Facebook? Yeah. I think I've got like, you know, two, I got like 100 Facebook friends, so at least 100 people have seen it. <laughs> no. But half of those are relatives <laughs> and friends from school, so. Right. I've got a good supportive, supportive family. Mm -hmm. And I think you have like a three or four accounts. <laughs> Just to boost my confidence. That's a secret. So this is Carmen. Known him for many, many years. And we're pretty hardcore Freddy fans. Yes. Definitely Freddy fans. We could say horror fans. Horror fans. But definitely the Nightmare on Elm Street series was Freddy's our guy. Pretty much, yeah. So we'll what get we into by. Yeah, we'll get into why why he is our number one out of all the different slashers and all that. So if you haven't listened to Movie Night before, basically it's a poor man's audio commentary. You at home have the movie, you cue it up with us, and right now we're hitting play and the New Line Cinema logo, the blue and black logo comes up, which I always associated with Freddy yeah, because exactly. I always watched it. I mean, that was their, that was their little baby. That was it. Freddy's the one. Well, they said that. Freddy, is, Freddy built New Line Freddy Cinema. New Line Cinema, that's right. So go ahead, press play. We're getting a quote here. We're reading a quote from the Bible. That's kind of daring for a horror movie. Oh, I always get past that part. Yeah. I don't know. I've seen... How many times have you seen this movie? Oh, gee. Well, man. I mean, this was... You know, we talked about this earlier, how this movie really defined the Nightmare on Elm Street franchise into a whole new audience. We had it where it started, we, we really got to this point where it got a little bit of a Hollywood kind of background. Yeah. With the one-liners. Right. You know, so this really kind of brought other people into the horror genre. Yeah. That wasn't into it before. Right. It's almost like the Nightmare series, because like we were saying earlier in our non-recorded conversation, <laughs> a lot of the slashers are quiet, where you have Jason and Michael Myers, the two big ones, they don't say anything. Exactly. And and we now have a horror, a killer with a personality. Yeah, the first personality. And it almost seems like the Arnold, Schwarzenegger, Sylvester Stallone action movie kind of one-liners started influencing other genres and horror movies in that way, where... Freddy was the first to really do that. And it's interesting because I just recently watched the first two Nightmare on Elm Streets just mm -hmm. to refresh. Because, you know, those are kind of like the first two seasons of The Simpsons or like season one of Seinfeld or something. It's like, okay, you know, I see them trying it's to build something. Yeah, but it's not hitting on all cylinders yet. Right. And, the you know, the first one I think was 84. Second mm -hmm. one, it made a lot of, you know, the first one made money, so the second one the next year, 85. Yep. And they're not by any means, you know... They're not even comparable, those two. Yeah, I, part one part. Is, is good. It's part a classic. Part one is, yes, good to very good Yeah, in the, in the horror movie, you know, and a great start. Right, and Freddy has just very few lines in that. He's played very, very scary. Correct. And very kind of like pedophile just kind of dirty, yeah, you know, he's laughing and really creepy. Yeah. Second one, you get a couple... Remember that one line in the second movie where he's like, Jesse... You are the body. Yeah, you've, you've got the body, and I've got the brain. Yeah, and he pulls off his yeah, scalp, and scalp. you see the pulsating brain. So, so that's we little one-liners. We're getting a hint of it. Right. And then the third one, the Dream Warriors, yep. and the second one didn't have anything to do with um, Wes Craven. Correct. I guess something happened. I don't know the behind-the-scenes story, but basically New Line wants to make the money on it. 
exactly. creative differences. Okay, we own the rights, so we're just going to make it. Right. And part two, part two's got to be one of the worst sequels ever. Correct. Just like in anything. In general. In yes. general. I, it's, it's, if you think of movies and then the sequel, that's probably one of the worst ones. Yeah. That? Because all, also, the reason you think it's one of the worst ones is because Nightmare on Street was so high. Yeah. To for a bar for a horror movie right so it's like okay it's gotta go there but it just went so much I mean yes Crocodile Tundee 2 sucked compared to Crocodile Tundee <laughs> but you don't really think about that because right, they were right. just both you know C as movies there's another great one liner that's not a knife <laughs> that's a knife yeah, we can only reference one liner movies all night tonight that's the rule one liner <laughs> movies shouldn't be too hard because we have Every a lot of movie. <laughs> <laughs> everything alright let's get back to real quick back to Nightmare on Street 4 here uh, so we're picking up, aren't we picking up right after three? Yeah, because with part two being so horrible, <laughs> thankfully, I think Wes Craven got involved in the third one again. Right, and they like they they just pretty much exited that whole plot. Yeah, it's like, it. let's pretend part two yes, didn't happen. Exactly. And part three, you know, much I think... like it, Halloween three, though, too, right? Same yeah. Same thing. For the most part? Well, in Halloween, I was reading that um, John Carpenter was saying that he envisioned the Halloween series to be a new horror story every Halloween oh, and it would be right, like a fr- right. like franchise Halloween or something yeah, yeah. and that was his experiment gotcha and then Must- Mustafa Akkad or however you pronounce his <laughs> name realized let's bring Michael back for exactly. the fourth one yeah and I mean we were watching part four just when this part four was coming out right. like this was kind of like a little sequel mania that's true. era that's true. they were starting that horror oh man so like 88, 89 yeah, late 80s horror. we started getting into Fangoria magazine Fangoria and then like they all started coming out all those movies horror show shocker they all just it's like I need to make wheelchair you know, or electric chair another electric yeah. chair movie it's just like all that same stuff over and over again uh huh uh huh Phantom of the Opera with Robert Englund Robert and all Robert. that we saw that at the theater we saw that yeah. at the Bricktown <laughs> Theater <laughs> see some Pretty secrets boring. don't need to be revealed that's right Um. so the third one like I know you're not a super fan of the third one I just I probably haven't seen it enough. I would say. I mean, it's still good. I mean, yeah. It's a pretty cool. You know, because really, when you get down to it, what's the horror? What's the Freddy movies about? The Freddy movies are about the cool kills. Yeah. Because we go to the dream state, and then it's all it, our rules. Right. Whatever we want to invent. Right. And so we had some cool ones, obviously with Corey Feldman. And yeah. Everyone, I think that's probably the most memorable one in that movie, at least for me. Which one? Wait, Corey Feldman? Yeah, in part three, where he's <laughs> where he's doing the puppet. Where they, oh right, okay. Where Freddy's like the big puppet master. Yeah. Is that Corey Feldman though? I think it is. I it? don't know. I, don't, <laughs> I haven't. I haven't seen it in a couple of years. I'm not. Because I know Corey Feldman was in uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Four, right? Right. That's not Corey Haim. Corey Feldman, and then Part Five, he was in the beginning of that. So I don't. I don't think. But it was the guy who looked like him. It was the poor man's Corey Feldman. <laughs> it was actually Corey Feldman. I think a German actor, Feldstein. Feldstein, Corey Feldstein was in there. So for me, part three really just took it creatively to someplace new and really amped it up, kind of gave it this dose of creative steroids and made it something special. Because like you're saying, the being in the dream world just allows you to do anything. Exactly. As a writer, it's free form. Yeah. It's let's do little scenarios here and there. Yeah. And that's why I love Freddy because... It's not just a guy walking like he just got hit in the head by a brick at like, you know, exactly. for just this zombie pace and chasing Correct. after someone. It's a guy exactly. who can manipulate, be creative, right. be twisted, be dirty, all that kind of stuff. Yep. And I don't know, when we're teenagers watching this, we're loving it. You know, it's just so maniacal, so fun, so different. Yep. And part three really takes it to a level where there's so many, like, what's your favorite line from part three? From part three? Yeah. Oh, I think geez. you said it earlier, right? I did. Uh, no, I don't remember. Let's get high. Wasn't oh, it that, that one? Was your, that was your favorite. But then, cause, and then <laughs> it follows up with like, "What a rush!" <laughs> so he really starts. And there's there's that there's that other one in part three. Remember the like, or there's that other, just to repeat that. There's that other one in part three where the Dick Cavett show was on TV. Oh, right, the talk show. And then Dick Cavett turns into Freddy, and That's he's like, right. "Why don't you shut that?" And he just like. Yep. And then the TV turns, like his arms come out of the TV and take the girl and like oh, bust her head into it. It goes right into the TV. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Awesome. So really cool stuff going on. And of course they bring back Nancy. Right. So it's very much just like that should be part two. Part two doesn't exist. Part three is part two. That's right. And we have a really nice story. It gets into Freddy's background with the mother 
son of a thousand maniacs mm-hmm. kind of thing. Yeah. And it ends with Freddy being his ashes, his bones being buried in a auto wreckage yard. Mm-hmm. The holy water and the cross are laid on it. And then we have Kristen, Kincaid, and Joey who survive along with Nancy. Okay. And now this is where part four is picking up. And I'm going to argue, I think that three and four are some of the best just sequels, back-to-back movies, just in general. Yep. Like any genre. You know, take... And this might sound crazy. I mean, it's not on the level of like a Godfather, Godfather 2 kind of thing, but... (laughs) No. Again, it's just a horror movie. It is. But I think for what it's trying to do, I think it does it so well. And it can, you know, continues continues the storylines, continues the characters. It knows what it is. It doesn't try to be anything too pretentious or dumb itself down too much. Mm -hmm. And with three and four, just the creativity is there. And it's just a lot of fun to watch these movies. Definitely. And it really defines Freddy as we know him, like you're saying. Yes. You're still trying to find out if Corey Feldman's in this not, movie. Not. You're right. You're, you're, right. Right. <laughs> you're like, I hope he doesn't bring it up. It's poor man's Corey Feldman. <laughs> poor Cor- Corey Feldstein was in this. Corey Feldstein. <laughs> you are, you are a, a walking Google, a walking IMDb, so we captured a rare moment right here. <laughs> We're editing that out, right? I don't think so. I think I'm going to keep it in. <laughs> okay, we'll edit it out. Um, okay, so here, just to kind of keep up with the story, we're probably about 10 minutes in. We've had the opening The opening sequence. scene where the dog bites her. She wakes up, and of course, you know, she's got the gash. The dog's, the dog's got, got the blood. blood. And that's just a hint that Freddy is on the verge of coming back. He's not back yet, but... Correct. There's something going on. Something going on. And we should note that Kristen is not the same Kristen from the third movie. Uh, Arquette. Patricia, Patricia Arquette. Arquette. A.K.A. The Medium. <laughs> no, that's right. A.K.A. x Miss Nicolas Cage. <laughs> so she... I think this girl's a ripoff of... Uh, Lark Voorhees. Lark Voorhees from Saved by the Bell with the glasses here. Definitely. That's, I've never noticed that until right now, actually, but... <laughs> It's totally true. And this girl, I think this girl was in Just the Ten of Us. Mm-hmm. She was one of the, I think you're right. one of the daughters. <laughs> when you're 13, you remember that kind of stuff because she's kind of a hot girl. So, in an 80s kind of way. So, the story is very just the next year. You know, it's picking the penis up. Envy line. Was this? The penis envy line. The penis envy line. And let's mention that the writer here, one of the major writers, there's a couple of them, but Brian Heglin. And you might recognize that name from being the Oscar winner, winning writer of L.A. Confidential. Um, the Razzie Award winner of The Postman. Oh, there you yeah, go. Yeah, he wrote The Postman. I think it was the same year he got both of those. That's He's like, it's never been done before for a writer. <laughs> but he also directed, uh, wrote and directed A Knight's Tale with Heath okay. Ledger. He's been around. And recently he did like The Green Zone. This year he was busy. Green Zone and there was a couple, like two other movies that he did. I want to say Salt. I think he, he wrote this coming, uh, Salt that's coming up. Oh, another one? Yeah, the, uh, what's it called? The Who's the actress in Salt? Uh, Angelina Jolie. Oh. You know, like the wannabe Mission Impossible movie oh, that's coming out oh, with her? Yes, 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 yes. So, okay, Freddy's not here yet, but we get the sense that he's coming. We got a good writer with a pretty solid imagination coming up with this stuff. And the director here? Rennie Harlan. Rennie Harlan, who hmm. went on to do Die Hard 2. That's right. What was the... And then he went on to marry... Gina Davis. And he directed... The Long Kiss Goodnight, where they met that one. And then, oh, remember the movie that... The flop? The pirate movie? Oh, oh. Uh, Treasure Island. Was that what it was called? With the... Uh, or Cutthroat Island, was Cutthroat it? Island. Cutthroat Island. Cutthroat With Island. Matthew Modine. <laughs> Matthew Modine. From uh, Full Metal Jacket. That's right. He played Joker, right? I remember, I remember that gro- he was in that Gross Anatomy as well that was on right. cable all the time. With Daphne. Now this shot, what's that? It's like they're walking in, re- in reality, and now there's like the yeah. Freddy Claw along the lock. So maybe right there, it's kind of like a rule breaker, you know? Yeah, it's that seems more of just like a... <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty funny. This is... what like, is, He's like Karate Kid inspired here? Uh, I just... Maybe he's like... He has to be somewhat of a badass because he's going to fight Freddy. You yeah. Know, you know, it's like foreshadowing. Yeah. So we have to show strength, which it's more just... Speed and <laughs> bad timing. <laughs> yeah. 
This guy kind of reminds me of Christian uh, Slater. Christian Slater. This is almost he's got like that well, kind of Christian vibe Slater. of like. It's that. like everybody's a little bit of everybody uh, else. from some other movie or whatever. Like we can't pay all these guys. Even so let's even get none of these guys. Even though we just said that this movie is a great sequel and it has some interesting <laughs> aspects to it. <laughs> By the end of this commentary, we will hate this movie. This so we've seen this movie about eighty times. <laughs> and this is the first time we're gonna hate it. And we're totally gonna hate it. <laughs> this is hilarious. <laughs> Oh, uh, we, and look, we have a little father-son thing going on here. They're trying to give a little character. Yep. A little relationship. Respect to this movie for doing that. Oh, so he's <laughs> the brother of Alice. I forgot about this. I haven't seen this movie in about four years. Oh, yeah. Now we're introducing Alice because she's going to carry the torch. That's right, on to the next movie. Doesn't Scream in the Scream movies, didn't they talk about that if a character survives one sequel and the next one they have to die in the first act? Oh, yeah, Did that's Did you remember right. hearing that's, that? I think that's one of the rules they do. So, if Kincaid, Joey, and Kristen are the survivors, we have to introduce the person who's going to pass the... They're going to pass the torch to. Right. And here we have Alice, and she has Alice some kind of powers. Alice forced in the... Yeah, we showing. What? So, she's yelling at her dad. That's the part we're at. Now, if you're following along, it's not important, super important that you follow every exact moment, because we're going to be kind of going off in different aspects and tangents here. Correct. But that's where we're at. And then after this, Alice in part five, she continues in that one, right? Correct. With the dream child. Yep. What did you think of the dream child? Uh, yeah. I remember, again, you got to go by the deaths. And the comic book death was good. Yeah. Very but creative. the motorcycle one was really cheesy for me. I do like the line in there, though. I feel the need. The need. <laughs> this boy feels the need for speed. <laughs> but I think that was ripped off from like the Days right of, stuff or something. Days, or Days of Thunder. Of, Days of Thunder? I feel the need for speed, you know? Okay. And then, so part five is a lost movie. Forget about that. Yeah. Part six. <laughs> we introduced the <laughs> wonderful world of 3D Freddy. 3D Freddy. We saw this in the theater when it came out. Oh, yeah. You had, I mean, you had to go see Freddy in 3D. Because they pulled the old, the old Jason trick where it's like uh, Friday the 13th. The right. final chapter. Exactly. So here it was oh, Freddy's right. Dead. Freddy's Dead, the final nightmare. The final nightmare. Right. So being, you know, 14 at that point, 15, okay, yep. we're going to buy that. That's true. <laughs> you know, why not? <laughs> Here's a good trivia. I remember when that came out, obviously we went to go see it and we got our glasses. But then I had my dad go to the theater over up north to get a whole set of them. To get a set of glasses and he got me like 15 pairs. Get out of so here. So I had like 15 pairs of them unbent. <laughs> Nice. Just a full on Freddy's Dead ones. That's pretty eBayable. Do you know where those are at? Or uh, I do know where those are, and those are those will be remaining in my private collection. Nice. <laughs> Look at this guy. If anyone wants to place a bid, please email me, <laughs> and we'll see if we can get him to bend no, it all on his uh, his rule. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, Back part six is directed by Rachel Talley too, who's a producer oh, on this one. Yes. And I remember after we saw part six and it was so bad, mm-hmm. we were had like a vendetta against Rachel Talley. We're That's like, right. Don't mention that name to us again. That is correct. Even though being, you know, 15, we don't know what she, she directed this, but who wrote it, you know, yeah. we can't well, she, blame her. She was for in, it. Uh, when they had those making ofs for okay. part four on this one, uh-huh. she was doing a, a lot of it, a lot of the interviews because okay. she knew like she was kind of, yeah. she's in line for the next one. Yeah. So for part six, oh, okay. We have to stop because right, what are we watching right now? <laughs> uh, we're watching a uh, urine that could light shit on fire. <laughs> a dog has just pissed fire and that's going to resurrect Freddy. <laughs> Brian so, Heglin, what were you smoking when you wrote this? <laughs> so, I mean, like, what, you know, what else is there, really? It's just, you're at the point of, okay, you know, I'm out in the woods. I'm going to piss on something and make it come back to life. <laughs> it's like, okay, we know this is the dream world. So, Kincaid has fallen asleep, and he wakes up, and he's in he's in the auto yard where Freddy's bones are buried. This right. is a pretty cool effect. Yeah, coming back I, together. I like the and bones the coming cool, together. Yeah, and, like, the skin and the blood and the... Yeah, it's gonna like veins. Yeah, everything's pretty kind of cool here. This is nice, and yeah. this is 1989, so mm-hmm. CGI isn't like taken over yet by no, any means. No. So how well, was, they... it was that? Remember the special effects guy was that crazy guy, Screaming Mad George, who did this movie? Okay. And are uh, you for real? No, I don't think I've Screaming ever... Mad George. No, okay, that... I think you're gonna say like Kevin Yeager or Rob Bottin or no, something. No, Screaming Mad George. Screaming Mad George, because uh, the cockroach scene. Yeah, is I think one of the coolest scenes for special effects. Sure. In a horror movie at this time. And uh, they had some excellent tips and tricks here to get the, uh, the special effects come out, right? Nice, nice. So, gotta give props to Screaming Mad George. 
I like the fire on the hand and the glove is there. Exactly. And while we wait, there's only a couple things left. The infamous hat. Uh-huh. And of course. Yes. The there claws. we go. And I know in the theater, they're just watching this in general. We're like, yeah, he's exactly. back. When the claws come out, you're like, yes. We're, you know, it's ready for a Freddy Rampage. Uh-huh. So, like you say, we're waiting for... What a, and that's a cool shot. Rennie Harlan, give it up here. We do the shadow. Exactly. Where you and can then, see the hat visibly, the claws, and they move a little bit. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's great stuff. Very iconic. And this is right out of like an action movie or something. Mm-hmm. And are we going to have a, a one-liner here? I think so. Uh, we're watching it with the sound down so it doesn't pick up for copyright <laughs> issues. And I, we don't have subtitles on this, so I don't know what he said. But... <laughs> I mean, we used to know these one-liners left and right. And by now, Robert England's got it down. He knows what's going on. Exactly. Part three really focused it, whereas part one and two kind of were just feeling it out, had him more scary. Now he's comic relief. Yep. And you could say, too, I think that along with the action movie stuff, I want to say this might have been influenced by, like, the stand-up comedy boom that was going on late 80s, early 90s. No, definitely the comic relief. Comic relief. I mean, that was huge. Yeah. Stand-up comedy had that huge thing, and, you know, obviously... Made it, by by the nineties it started fading right but you're still trying to get a hold of that I definitely could see that yeah you I remember you were a huge fan of um, HBO the one night stand one night the stand HBO specials the thirty minutes shows yeah, yeah. I watch those all the time and nowadays seeing people who have been in the business and successful like a Drew Carey Jerry Seinfeld those one night stands were just yeah because I mean that was like Ellen DeGeneres I mean uh-huh. there were so many big hits from you know people from those things now, right who are huge stars yeah they're huge stars and you know they were in their late twenties early thirties doing that. And I love this sequence here. Very cool. And it just goes to show you how you can appreciate the non-CGI-ness of it, where this is these are real cars, and be, you can just tell that it's been rehearsed, obviously, exactly. blocked out. Yep. I like the shot here. We do a nice cool. zoom out, yep. and he's in this maze of an this auto. super maze of cars. And it's like this planet, <laughs> this planet of cars. Yep. Oh, and we just yeah. classic. Got to get the claws working. Tell him Freddy sent you. One down, two to go, right? So he guts him. Kincaid wakes up. Now wait, is there blood in his chest here? Or are we getting gypped? There's, I don't think there's any blood in this thing. Now what happened here? So Freddy guts him with the glove. And right. he wakes up in his bed and he just happens to be... I think uh, somebody screwed the pooch on that one. Screwed the pooch, dude! What's up? Because listen... Look at Johnny Depp. I mean, if we think of Never Elm Streets and we think of blood. Yeah. Johnny Depp. Johnny I mean, Depp, ultimate blood Blood spurts. Yeah, that's know. that. I mean, all, one of the yeah a horror movie classic blood spurts. Now, was that before Evil Dead, Dead by Dawn, with the wall in the blood? Remember when Ash shoots? Yeah, the wall and like all the blood comes at him. That's Evil Dead One, though, right? No, I think it was oh, two. two. Yeah, and I'm gonna say that was '87. Yeah. No, that so that was first. No, no, Nightmare on Elm Street was first '84. Then yeah. was that? Yeah, and then Total Recall had the jugular. Right. So, you'll get that joke if you've listened to our Total Recall commentary. That's right. It's like we have to force you to listen to the other commentary. So, <laughs> it's all going to be connected. Seriously, we should just do it like Lost. Like <laughs> we're only going to flashback to Total Recall on this one. Dude, can we get like a Lost uh, flashback, flash forward, sideways flash button? Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's so, not, that sound effects copyrighted, by the way. So yeah. let's, you got to edit that out. That's right. <laughs> and here's a callback to the first Nightmare on the Street movie right here. Yeah. We have Joey in the Johnny Depp mode with the headphones on. Isn't he watching? Isn't Johnny Depp on the cover of that wrong stone? Oh, look at this. Let's take a look at it. What's the? Who is the guy on MTV? What's that? Dave with the with the goggles on? Oh yeah, on? the Dave guy. Yeah. That's a crazy yeah. reference. Oh, oh. And, and this is we have gratuitous. This might have been my favorite moment of the movie back in 1989. <laughs> she came out of the poster and is in his waterbed. Hey, dude, this is creative and tantalizing at the same time. Yep. You think it was scary for that actress to be underneath there? Yeah. Well, I'm sure, like, right out of sight is, like, some tank, you know? Oh, yeah. Right? No, it's, I mean, it's just right over the other side. But, again, that's they, not... They, again, they show that in the making of... Yeah. I that's... had that on VHS somewhere. Freddy, how's this for a wet dream? Cla- that is a classic. That's and a great line. The claw goes up and the claw comes down pretty much on this one. And thankfully, I didn't have a waterbed, but if I did, I'm sure I would have been afraid to sleep in one after this. Yeah, I never had a waterbed. And that's just perfect for an image where you have the blood spurting out uh-huh, like that. Uh-huh. So it's a little homage, tip to tip of the hat to the first movie. And we have Joey. Two down, one to go. Yeah. So now we're... 
Only missing Kristen, right? I just again, I have to go back to that last the kill for uh, what's his name? Kid Kim Cade. Uh huh. For Kid, Kid Cade, no blood laying there. Yeah. The end of that scene, super blood. Super blood. <laughs> Water. Yeah. And the body's gone. You know, yeah. It's just so ridiculous. So I think Rennie Harlan, you messed up a little bit because earlier she got bit by the dog. She's got blood. Blood. I think we are starting to like this movie less and less as we go. <laughs> Here comes the brother who wanted the wannabe Bruce Lee guy into the room. And she's the dream master. Christian later. Christian later. <laughs> Starring Christian later. Yep. And this is total foreshadowing, right? Because okay, he's got the move, so when he fights Freddy. Of course. But now this is gonna set her up because she does all the moves later on too. Yep. When she learns what that the whole idea is that she can take the powers of the people he's killed. Right. She has and, obviously the psychic abilities. She's got psychic abilities and she's able to harness yeah. that into... And use it against him. Yes. So yeah, we're showing here that she can't do anything and then eventually she will, will be able to. And this kind of reminds me of the Hicks and Ripley scene from Aliens where he teaches her how to use the gun. <laughs> I only say that because I watched Aliens a few weeks ago. So it's for, it didn't remind me of it back then when this movie was going on. And look, a little comic relief. We got the shoe going into the fish tank. You gotta have those light areas. And here, Joey's mom's gonna see what happened. Right, Let's again. See the, we, the big reveal. The, <laughs> yep. we, oh, you always turn it off, you always leave it on the TV. Everything's crazy. Come on, man, get out of bed. She thinks he's lazy. Shh. And he's under the bed! Which, I don't really understand, but it was kind of cool when you're watching it. Yep. Again, if you built that whole little set yeah. with the t- with the tank and the water and everything, uh-huh. you're going to use the most of it. Yeah, yeah, it's like, how many shots can we exactly. get? That's a great point. <laughs> you know? It's like, that's it, let's try it again. Exactly. Because again, now now the dream logic, the dream kill logic doesn't make sense because didn't he just get gutted? So why is <laughs> hey, he underwater? Gutted, no blood. This guy got gutted yeah. in the water, blood. Yeah. Broke, you know. The, yeah. the, the waterbed got cut, so it wouldn't but be that whole. that was in the dream. That was in the dream. So in reality... Right, he should Rennie just be Harlan. Slashed. He should just totally be slashed in the bed. Uh, not yeah. Like that, okay, so Rennie Harlan, good action director. That's right. But I don't know about the story. And Brian Hegman, dude, you won an Oscar. What are you doing here? <laughs> what, what's with the logic here? <laughs> we're starting to turn on our own. Uh, we're, dude, that, seriously, this movie was like in my top ten, uh, top twenty of my favorite movies. Just for. <laughs> I, but now, actually, now hearing myself say that, I don't know. <laughs> In terms of horror movies, yeah. Part three right. and four hold up, I think. Yeah, top 20. You can't put in the top 20 movies of all time. Of all time, no. That'd be crazy. But horror. Is horror, like, yes. Horror, horror, maybe even top 10. Yeah. Yeah. Again, I think looking at the whole franchise as a as a big picture, I right. think it, you know, it really deserves something special. Yeah. And now we have Alice and Kristen having the scene. We're 26 and a half minutes into the movie. Yep. And they're walking into the classroom. Oh, and <gasps> there's people missing and who's missing joey and kincaid and And kristen starts going crazy and she gets knocked out Mm -hmm. which is going to lead to a very cool scene (laughs) because of course when you fall asleep in this world oh look at this robert england and drag (laughs) i was trying not to remember this (laughs) and she's got the big nails yeah he's got the big nails yeah they're in the red nails to wong fu too, too Wong Fu. Too Wong Fu. Thanks for the memories. Julie Newmar. <laughs> Freddy Krueger. <laughs> this is so ridiculous. And it's funny because I guess Kristen can't imagine Freddy without the makeup, right? But we all know what Robert England looks like. Exactly. And this is a cool shot right here where she turns and I think he's going to smile and he's got the weird teeth, right? Right, right. Look at that. Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> And then that's that's great right there. Yeah, the shirt gets all bloody. <laughs> Dude, every line of his has been a one-liner. Every yeah, every I love line it. Said. But they're all memorable, memorable one-liners. Because yeah. you know, in general, like in a movie, if it's dr- dramatic and characters are fighting for things, they're not going to talk in one-liners. They're going to talk in, "I want to get this from you. You you have this that I want, and <laughs> I'm not going to give it up easy." Yep. But you know, for this sure. is like an for action movie. Bike foreshadowing the bike the craven the uh, little diner yep. which is going to be a great little idea that well we'll talk about it when it gets there but remind me to talk about our one of the coolest um 
Star Trek The Next Generation episodes. I think I have to mention Star Trek every time we do a commentary. <laughs> I think you have. Um, the one where like they're looping, they keep looping. Yeah. And then the X-Files did one like that. And then the last couple of years we've had movies where it's all just, you know, looping back and forth. There was also one in The Hitchhiker. Remember that show? There was a, there was a looping one in that okay. one too. Okay, okay. Nice, nice. Yeah. So, great little concept. So here we are, they're in the diner. And right. the girls have crushes on the boys. So, <laughs> now, and let's just go away from and that subject. Let's talk to that about the whole... And genre. Freddy's not in the scene right now, so... Yeah, exactly. but wannabe lisa from saved by the bell is look at that outfit dude she, she might have been the creation for urkel she's female Actually, urkel. i was just gonna say she those glasses that's total urkel dude maybe maybe we do need to credit our writer properly brian heglin you've gained some points back for the respect we're we're hooking it up i think to, i think now this movie is starting to influence the 90s just like total recall influenced the 2000s oh man we're watching some prophetic movies over here. <laughs> but they have not made... Nightmare Street 4 is prophetic. <laughs> Pro- I, I hope Pro- that... Pathetic. Pathetic. <laughs> Zing. I, I would like to see the waterbed, though, where you have the uh, supermodel floating under it. That would be interesting. <laughs> Where's that hologram? Thirty nine ninety five. I don't even think they make waterbeds anymore, do they? That's like such an 80s thing. Sand. They're sand. all sand now. Really? That was from Seinfeld, man. No. <laughs> You sad. Dude, water water is scarce. You can't afford to sleep on it. You gotta drink it. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, here everyone's comes together. And, well, let's just say this. I'm gonna say that this movie right now is prophetizing <laughs> nine oh two one oh. Oh yeah. Because you have the peach pit. That's right. Right here. <laughs> okay, so Kristen's Kristen's getting all emotional and you can the focus is shifting now. The peach pit. <laughs> Joke grenade. Yeah, no. Now I don't know why I know that. I only watched like four episodes of that show. Same here. So, but here we have Alice becoming the focus now, and we're Correct. getting to the a- end of Act One. Freddy is is back in action. Right. He's going to take out his next victim. The, his next victim. The last one on the list. And I'm glad that you mentioned the kills because this is something that Saw has probably done the best. Where you only want go see a Saw movie now because Just of the, the kills. crazy torture. I haven't seen anyone past the first one, so I guess I guess the, you watch for the kills. Is that how it goes? I mean, I haven't watched the last three. I, I think I watched the first four. Okay. But after a while, it's just like, okay. You know, it's like a big Rube Goldberg torture oh. device thing. You know, it's, <laughs> so it's like Rube Goldberg meets the Spanish Inquisition. Okay. That's all the Saw movies, pretty much. But, you know, I guess they're fun. They're, they're, they're fun for what they are. But Freddy's the same way. And again, the reason why we like Freddy so much is because it's not Jason where... Okay, you can... I think you empathize with Jason more because he was a kid that drowned, that became a killer. Right. And Freddy is just a pedophile who Freddy's became... a bad a, dude. Yeah, he's, he's, a, he's a bad dude. Yeah. But for some reason, he's kind of entertaining in this dream mode because right. he's not molesting anybody or... <laughs> you know, so he's, he's killing how, teenagers. How get funny? It's just, you know, it's just the whole thing, I guess, just like, teenagers. I mean, if you just live, if you worked at a kid's school in the boiler room, you know, doing a janitor stuff or whatever. Yeah. You just listen to you got the, no like, personality. Richard Pryor albums down there. <laughs> so, I want that backstory. I want the backstory Seriously. of Freddie listening to all the comedy albums. Maybe this will go out to somebody who could do some last minute updates <laughs> and say, hey, listen, Mr. Bay. <laughs> Mr. Bay and... Whoever is directing this new movie, I haven't really researched it yet. It doesn't matter, really, does it? Yeah, it's just it's generic. Hey, uh, you got you got a strobe light, and uh, could you could you turn the camera all the way down? I don't want any light coming in the camera. <laughs> strobe lights. All right, let me do a Michael Bay horror movie. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's everyone. Texas yeah. Chainsaw Massacre. It's like in the previews, it's like dark and just nonstop strobe lights. Yeah, you yeah. Know, like, give me a break. Yeah, and just. Uh... In the editing bay, just close your eyes and press the button every couple seconds. Exactly, exactly. And to appreciate that, I mean, you have to watch the original Texas and then watch the remake. And yeah. just because in the remake there is more blood, right, doesn't it's, necessarily make it better. Or even scarier. Yeah. Because I think the beauty of Texas Chainsaw Massacre, just to go off subject for a sec, is that it looks like it is almost like uh, to that like snuff film. Yes. You know, it's one of those like... I should not be watching this. That's a great point. I've never thought of it like that. Yeah. 
And that's how, at least how I always feel. Whereas, like, everything is just so Hollywoodized now and stylized. Yeah. And it's just, we can just show quick cuts and fake scariness that way. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's so true, because now thinking about that Texas Chainsaw, it's so it's so grimy and dirty. Exactly. Grimy, Sleazy. dirty. Yeah. Like, you feel like you're in that van where that guy's telling that story, and you're just like... I just, I That's creepier. Look. That moment's creepier than anything. Like, well, it always comes down to, you know, psychology... And making you scared that way versus actually showing stuff. Yeah. Because, I mean, like, a movie like The Hitcher, not a huge bloody movie. Right. But one of the scary... When people say scary movies, we always think of those kind of ones that really are psychological thrillers. Yeah. You know, that really scare you. I mean, this is a horror movie. Right. So, yes, you got gore to it, but this is there really some... Scary, I mean, yes, there's a little jumpy here and there. Mm-hmm. A lot of horror movies have that. But to really have those mental connections with somebody... Yeah. Where... Like, holy shit, this is really freaking me out. Yeah. That's where you get into that excellent c- category for the horror movie. Totally, yeah. Where you're just sitting there, and just the words, and just the way that the characters look or are acting with each other, exactly. that's making you more tense and scary than watching a leg get chopped off. Correct. Correct. Which I, I totally it's remember. It's sadistic, and there's no point to it for the most yeah. part. Yeah, yeah. And that's... You know, you can. I guess you can complain about Hostel and Saw in those respects, but for the genre of what they are, I guess they do it fine. Yeah. I mean, they're not trying to be psychologically scary, but I agree with you. I think psychologically scarier movies. I'd rather be sitting here with the lights off, and there's no blood on the screen, but I'm feeling so tense and just like I got to turn this movie off. I can't watch it anymore. Right. So we're back, we're 35 minutes into the film, and Kristen is waking up on the beach in a dream. And why is this? Because her mom gave her sleeping pills. Yes. She was having trouble sleeping. Yes, and that is the mom. Thanks, mom. mom. (laughs) Thanks, mom. And she is the same actress from the third movie. That's just, you're right, you're right. And here's a quick story. My dad took me to see Nightmare on Elm Street Part 3 because I was such a big Freddy fan, or I was starting to get into horror movies. Right. And he's like, oh yeah, let's check it out. I think I was like 12. So I'm like, thanks, you know, thank you dad for doing that. And I just totally remember the scene where Freddie, in the dream, cut off Kristen's mom's head. And he's holding it, <laughs> yeah. and she's still talking, like, right. nagging yeah. her and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So obviously he didn't kill her, because she's here in the sequel, in the fourth movie. Love that little Jaws callback right here with Freddie's oh, yeah. glove. Definitely. Again, being creative again. Right. Some creativity. Freddie shows up on the beach. Yep. And we have our Saw-ish kind of, okay, here's going to be another interesting kill. What's right. the one-liner? Well, he puts the glasses on. <laughs> so he just stomps yeah, her head into the sand. The into the sand. <laughs> when Freddie puts the glasses on, it's like, okay, this is exactly. <laughs> and he just laughs. I'm just laughing. <laughs> <laughs> That's the one-liner. Him laughing into the sky. <laughs> and now she's back at the house. So I like how this environment switches. And look, she's even right. walking. Yep. And again, you just invert the camera and shoot this. Mm-hmm. Classic. So oh, it always works that effect, and it feels so much more real than right. like a CGI kind mm-hmm. of thing. And as a set designer, that would be so fun to do everything like that. You know, glue everything down, and vice versa. You know. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And here she flips down. Right. And we're keeping with the mythology of what we know. We've learned things in the first three movies about Freddy, Correct. and we're back into the boy of the, the room. Boy of the room. This is a great shot too, right here. Mm-hmm. Right between legs, and yeah, it just it, frames her. It's, yeah, it's Rennie Harlan just showing, hey, you know, I like to show these iconic characters. Yeah, he's gonna hold it. He's gonna hold up the glove right here or something. Yeah, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, perfect. We beat you before, right. but a dog pissed on my grave, <laughs> and I'm back. <laughs> Even though in the third one, you needed holy water and a cross and the moon and the planets had to be aligned. <laughs> but all I need now is just turbo dog piss. Yeah. <laughs> and that wakes me up for some reason. <laughs> so th- that's, uh, for me, that's kind of like the big weak link of like, I wish it would have been a little more yeah. myth- mythologized of like, okay, there was some loophole and right. he was able to come back. Exactly. But whatever, we'll we'll buy it. And now we're cross cutting, parallel cutting here with Alice because she's the dream master sensing all this. So Freddie's next line, fresh meat. Oh, Alice is awake and watching this. Right. (laughs) I love that slap and then the hug. I'm so sorry. (laughs) Oh, here we go. Freddie with the infamous. Oh, swearing. Yep. (laughs) 
Ooh, throws into the pit of it's fire. Like oh, here we go. And, yeah, Famous and image. Great shot of all the souls. Oh. And then here it is. I give you the power. So this Freddy shot with all the souls on his chest, all the faces popping through his chest. Awesome yeah. image. Oh, yeah. And they didn't Great do effect. that in the third one at all, I don't think. No. This is the first time Scream, we're getting Scream there. Scream Man George again? But look at this. This is a little ridiculous. <laughs> See, yeah, we're definitely crossing a lot of boundaries in this movie. Greetings from hell. <laughs> it just lights up. <laughs> and it goes on fire. It how just does... woke up. Yeah, and they're in the real world, so how does Freddy... I totally forgot about this part. <laughs> And now she look. I like that. I like that she looks at herself now. Right, right. And she's gotten the power in the dream, and she's going to start yeah. to assert herself. Christian later comes in now. <laughs> so, I mean, that was pretty cheesy. Greetings from hell. That was. And again, so now we're getting into that whole, we're getting a little comical. Yeah. But we're getting more people to watch this movie. That's right. It's getting, it's getting popular. Yes. And if three start, it's like three and four kind of perfected it, and as four goes along, it almost starts to become a parody like of itself a little bit. Like just little shots like that are just you know, you still could have probably made it through this movie without being so over the top like that or being silly. I mean that, that was a silly moment right there with that True. card. True. Um but it just cuts right back. I, I really like that shot where she looked at herself in the mirror. It was mm-hmm. just like, okay, you know. Yep. Some good stuff there. So it's Rennie Harlan and Brian Hanglin. You know, it just goes to show that just because it's a horror movie, it doesn't need to be just thrown away. I mean, you can try to make it dramatic. Try to have these nice little moments. Right. You know, it's just horror is just another emotion, right? A fear. Yeah. And I don't think we finished the story on the whole sequels. So yeah, six, okay. yeah, obviously we're talking about the three D one. So six was the three D one, which pretty much was dog shit. Yeah, because this is just Christian later in the room while they're watching TV. So yeah, they're exactly. watching the real world or something. <laughs> and not Freddy time is always good time. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we'll wait until Freddy comes back yeah. on the screen. So part six, pretty much all I remember is that last scene where it's like, put on your glasses and mm-hmm. let's just do it in 3D and, had, and Freddy's head coming at you and like all of them blowing up, whatever. Yeah. And they're like swirling so around cheesy. and stuff. Yeah. And I recently watched it and I remember like the big thing in there was it's his daughter grown up, the one girl who kind of looks like Trinity from the Matrix. Oh, okay. Um, she is kind of like his daughter that he had that oh, he yeah, didn't know right. about that's and right. she's the only one who can kill him. Yeah. And she goes into his mind at the end, <laughs> and we get all the different rooms of like who he became, oh, yeah, how right, he became. Right. And I remember the one scene where like he's the dad and he has the daughter, and like he's got the compulsions and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Um. So I mean, there were some interesting moments, but just overall, it was like yeah. forget it. So we got part seven after that. The new nightmare. The new nightmare. Wes Craven comes back, tries to retake it. What are your feelings on the new nightmare? Don't remember it. Okay. Well, that's that's so forgettable. Something. Forgettable. Um, I, again, I've been kind of brushing up on Freddy lately, so, watching it, okay, so Craven comes back, he was involved in the first, the third, right? I don't know, I haven't really researched the fourth one, um, and then he was involved in the seventh, and you can argue that one, three, four, and seven are the strongest ones. Um, seven is kind of like one of the first movies to, horror movies, to try to, like, spoof the genre without being like a naked gun kind of spoof okay and it almost does what scream does a couple years later because i think new nightmare is 93 94 ish Mm -hmm. and scream is 96 right and Wes craven's directing scream and it was the same kind of territory where it's like a it's the documentary ish kind of stuff i definitely remember being so different yeah i didn't really care for it and I listened to the commentary, and Craven was saying that Freddy was supposed to represent some kind of just evil force that manifests itself in movies mm-hmm. or in st- our storytelling in general as humans. Yep. And that's why he kind of looked like he was on steroids in that one. He's like really big, right, right. had like the bony client kind of glove. Yep. And then um, Nancy was back in that one. Yep. And she had like her son, and Freddy was trying to possess her. So kind of part five-ish stuff going on there with the dream child. But it was all right. It was all right. It wasn't like the greatest movie. Yeah. Okay, so from there we go to Freddy versus oh, Jason. Geez. What's the word on that? <laughs> oh, Freddy versus Jason. Mm-hmm. But, uh, I'm not, no comment. Well, I'll say this that, oh, by the way, one of our favorite one liners in the movie's coming up. This has <laughs> got to be one of the greatest want, Freddy lines. Wanna suck face? Wanna suck face. Him in a your shirt. Was on the back I of used to, I used to have the Fred. I used to go to this place called uh, Spencer's. Spencer's. We used to go there, mm-hmm. right? And they always had. They were like the cool, like heavy metal horror yeah. movie kind of place. Yep. And 
they always had the Freddy shirts. Yep. So they had one with that one, and there was another one in the mall. Remember oh. a little kiosk? Nice. That had those had Freddy shirts too. Right. The Jason shirts. And just that one where you had the uh, his head and like a hand coming out of it, mm-hmm. right? So Wanna Suck Face was on the back. And here we have a female Urkel kind of like sprucing herself up, getting a little bit hot. <laughs> cool effects right here. Yeah, definitely. What does it say? Learning is fun with Learning, Freddy? Learning is fun with Freddy. Yeah, well, just a little stop motion. Stop motion stuff. So great. You can't, the CGI really isn't doing it. And then Alice seems to be awake during everyone else's nightmares. Correct. Uh-oh, we've got blood. There's blood. What's going on here? Yep. Those are some big ass glasses. So now Alice is aware that she's in the dream and she needs to help. But why did she start smearing it? That's so weird. Kind of a cheesy effect. The hand goes into the into the desk. No, Alice gets trapped in the desk. What's this? That robot the, hand? Yeah, the, oh, because remember, she's into the gadgets and everything. Ah, uh, she's the nerd. Yeah, she's the nerd. So it's like, we'll have a gadget robot hand. Which... And I, I like this whole thing where, like, Everyone else in the class is just doing their stuff. You know, oh, yeah. it's the dream. and It's great acting right there. It's Juilliard. But Juilliard <laughs> acting. How many over-the-head shots have been in this movie so far? I think it was like number three or four already. Because we had the Kincaid in the uh, yeah. auto yard. Oh, Freddy with an apple. Mm-hmm. What are we going to have this time? What's the George Carlin line? Do you think somebody had to start that for him? <laughs> <laughs> What does it say on the board in the background? Please take your seats immediately and no talking. Oh, Just okay. I thought, I thought it would be altered by Freddy. Oh, exactly. I think they got his makeup probably the best in this movie. Yes. Freddy looks like Freddy in this one. Correct. The third one they got, like, the first two was like, forget about it. Right. Yeah, like, kind of three, four, five were very similar. And so. Yeah. And here we're, he's going to say the great line, want to suck face. Yes, now, let's talk about Freddy's makeup, because you were just mentioning in the new movie, you have some strong feelings about the way that he looks. Yeah, and uh, I think he looks less comical. I think he looks almost to the point of, he looks like a burn victim that almost, uh, it almost looks real to me. And it's kind of, it, I don't know, it it's, looks pretty, pretty, pretty bad. Pretty disturbing. Disturbing. So in a way that, like you were talking about with Texas Chainsaw Massacre, where like it's going to affect you on that, like that, yeah. just looking at him is going to be... Exactly. It could be tough. Yeah. So then let's talk about, okay, there is a remake of Nightmare on Elm Street, and we right. saw it coming, right? Yes. Because they're remaking everything, it's an yeah. easy way to make money and all that kind of stuff. So, oh, Nightmare on Elm Street, it's untouchable. I mean, especially for us, we're like, how can you mess with it? Right. But again, it's not, you know, it's not Citizen Kane, it's not... A hundred percent. Everything was done perfectly. I mean, and Michael Bay again has done every what Friday Thirteenth, right? Yeah, The Hitcher, Hitcher, Texas Chainsaw. It's, it's, I mean, and he's trying to do Rosemary's Baby. He's got the birds lined up. Alfred Hitchcock's Alfred The Hitch- Birds. He's do Alfred Hitchcock. Yeah, I mean, nothing's sacred, dude. It's wow. once he got away with Transformers too. It's like, I think, I think personally, he's daring us to stop him. He's just like, what <laughs> else think, can I, I do to mention people that before? Off? But it's yeah, it's definitely to that like. I can do whatever I want. Dude. Yeah. Because, I mean, The Hitcher is another... Like, it's a movie that doesn't really get recognized, but Rudger Hauer in that movie? Yeah. Really just scary. nice, subtle scariness. You know, he's yep. like a... He's the guy who you got a restraining order against, but the cops can't do anything about it. And it's very... But then you have Sean being in this new one, and it's just like, ah. Uh, oh, what's the thing? We change it because the girl's... The guy's the one that dies in that, and the girl's the one that's empowered. Yeah. So, anything... Whenever a remake comes along, it's always like... Okay, how can you make it better? If you can make it better and add to it, and whatever areas were lacking in the first time, mm-hmm. if you can fix those, then go ahead and do it. Yep. So I think Freddy's makeup, that could be argued one area. Mm-hmm. I mean, it did look kind of, yeah, a little bit little bit cheesy. Right. I mean, it, it looked it's more c- cinematic than real. Cinematic. Yeah. And which also kind of goes, i.e. fake, you know? Yeah. Versus this, where it looks a little more real. Yeah. And but again, what are we, we're only seeing it in a couple shots. Right. Low light, yeah, <laughs> backlight, right? You know, and you do like the actor, yes, definitely. Uh, obviously, we all watch Watchmen, so Jackie, Jackie and Earl Haley, Earl, Earl Haley, and it was filmed here in Chicago, so okay. kind of like that, yeah. So, Jackie Earl Haley, of course, uh, uh I remember growing up uh, from Bad News Bears, Kelly Leak, I watched that movie probably a hundred holy times. cow, wow, yeah, he was a little Kelly Leak, you know, the, the great pitcher or the great hitter mm-hmm. on the team, uh. 
but then, he can play creepy. And then he had, you know, his he you know he left Hollywood, came back. Little Children obviously got you know he got the Oscar for that nomination. And then uh, Watchmen, which uh, you know, love it or hate it, uh, you still have to look at Rorschach's performance, and it's it's easily the best one in the movie. Right. And yes, he's you know the, the character that everybody loves as well. If you read the you know if you read it before and you're waiting for it to come out. Yeah. You know the fan favorite. Right. And I think he he pulled it off. Right, so he's got the skills, yep. and that's a, if you put talent behind yeah, a role, exactly. someone who can kind of bring that depth. Right, because well, I mean, when you think of Robert England, you think of Freddy. So it, there was nothing really before that that we were like, "What's Robert? What's you know? What's he gonna do?" Yeah, and so it's kind of nice to have an anticipation. Right, that okay, we know Jackie Rohaley is good. Right, so give me good. But can Freddy be scary again? Because we've seen him go from scary in the first movie right. to slowly scary and, and more comical in the rest of these sequels. To even downright cheesy. To super cheesy, right. yeah. So how can he r- regain that in our minds, in our cinematic, just you know, when we're going there as fans, okay, I'm going to be scared by this guy who used to make me laugh. Well, I, I think, you know, when you, go, when you talk about a reboot, you know, you talk about pretty much re- in the walls you know mm-hmm. you're, you're, you're setting a whole new canvas right so all bets are off you shouldn't come in there with any expectations obviously know the source material which everybody does mm-hmm. but just it's a whole a new artist view you know i mean you tell two artists to get paint me you know starry night you right know, if you're going to get an infamous painting and another one's going to be a little wa- watercolor piece of shit that's a great example you yeah. know and so now it's just hey give me a freddie krueger story you have one and now we're gonna have a whole other take yeah so now, in terms of the story, it seems like they're pretty much sticking to what's come before. Right. It seems like they're kind of combining the first two because there's some shots in the second movie. I had forgotten about this. We get a little. We go to the uh, factory where he was burned, right. where he used to kind of kill the children, and all that kind of stuff. And in these previews, we're seeing the factory in it already. So that's all going to be included in the first movie. Yeah. I mean, so smartly they cut out all the Jesse stuff from the second movie. Kept all the Freddy material. Yeah. But you're still getting the same bathroom shot, the claw coming from the, through the water. Right, right. You're going to get all pretty much, I'm sure, obviously you've got to have the Johnny Depp with the bed. Yeah. And what, I'm it's going to, it's yeah, going mean, to be darker and bloodier? I mean, what are, <laughs> and Freddy's just going to be more disturbed? It's, yeah, it's less rubber on the phone, like, yeah. like tonguing. Yeah. For the liking camp. <laughs> right, I mean, this, that, in, in these, it totally looked so fake in the yeah. first movie. But back then, it was just done so quickly that it was a shock. Yes. So, as much as I want to be positive for this new Nightmare on Elm Street... Right. It's just, you know... When you look at the first Nightmare on Elm Street with Wes Craven, it was born out of this inspiration. Mm -hmm. It was... There was nothing about, oh, ten years ago it made money. So now if we do it again, people recognize it and they're going to want to see how we update it. It was about, okay, horror movies are popular. How can we come up with something new? Correct. And boom, he read about something about guys in uh, Korea or somewhere dying for, like, being scared to sleep. Oh, okay. And um, this had happened for a couple of years, and he's like, oh, this would be a great idea for a horror movie. Mm-hmm. Great, inspirational, that's how you're yeah, creative. That's how it works. But here it's like, no, Michael Bay goes on the list, yeah. you know, a Platinum Dunes. Exactly. And <laughs> they just, okay, these movies need to be remade because they're great concepts. Right. And we can we'll make them. do it. Yeah. And just easy but. Yeah, because we have, we don't have to hire anybody to rewrite, you know. Mm-hmm. We just do a quick little screenplay, right? With sources there. Yeah. Uh, oh, and P.S. Um, don't go to a school where you're gonna fall asleep in class all the time. <laughs> if the teachers are that boring, please ask to transfer to another school. <laughs> anyway, that's just a little side note. That if you're living in the land of Freddy. That's right. Maybe they they should like pump just pure oxygen in or something. <laughs> Casino style, right? <laughs> Love this. This is great here. Yeah, this is kind exactly, of pretty scary. Exactly. We got some scary stuff. We got Christian later. <laughs> Christian later. Uh, we're right at fifty three minutes, fifty three twenty right now. This movie's breezing by. Yep. This is some pretty good elevator acting. This is like Star Trek worthy right here. <laughs> it's like okay, elevator is going very fast. <laughs> okay, okay, go to the left. Go to the right. Oh, here it goes. It's sucking you in. Feel the G's. Oh, feel it. Look, at look at the cheeks. Oh, and it, it goes level to 13th floor. 13th floor. Upside down number. Exactly. It was kind of... He fell asleep in the john. I mean, come on. Come on, Bruce Lee. What are you doing? 
But and, and I'm gonna fall asleep in every class. What does this remind you of? What movie does this remind you of? Uh, maybe Big Trouble in Little China. Or The Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Big Trouble in China. Look, I was I was gonna say Cocoon. <laughs> <laughs> No, yes. We have a little dojo matrix styles. So, so. Wachowski brothers, or I guess it's just one brother these days. Yeah. Uh, the Wachowskis. We can say the Wachowskis. Okay, we can say the Wachowskis. We know you. We know your secret. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Nightmare on the Street Part 4. I'm not buying you a drink. <laughs> but let's give this. Let's give uh, Christian later some uh, props here for fighting, uh, acting against an invisible uh, right. co-star right here. Everybody's good when they're being pulled by strings. That's right. But look, now he mans up. He's like, okay, Freddy. <laughs> now I got gotcha. you. Oh, yeah. There we go. We're, we're watching a fight sequence with Christian <laughs> later fighting the air. Himself. Oh, oh, there's the glove. the glove. Okay. Oh, I, I forgot about this. This is cool. So the glove's going to fly up, right? Yeah, right into his yeah, gut. Exactly. Which <laughs> is, I mean... Don't ruin it. Don't you kind of have, like, a block for that? Come on. <laughs> He only made it like drum technique. <laughs> drum technique. <laughs> Cobra Kai didn't teach him that. Exactly. Oh, he's only a green belt. He's got the green oh. shoe. Oh, that's a, that's like a white see belt, you later. Actually, a white belt and a green. Okay, and, <laughs> and again, she wakes up from a dream. Why do the windows blow out? Maybe that was like, hey, we got two hundred bucks left. Do you want me to blow these windows up? <laughs> 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 and and Ruddy takes off his headphones in the chair. Launch them. <laughs> I think that was in that little special I watched. No, that was. That exact quote. <laughs> Even the special was all one-liners. <laughs> that is funny. But maybe her Dream Master powers influence reality. I guess that's what they're trying to say. Oh, I don't know what they're trying to say. Yeah, so she wakes up. They've already broken every rule. No, and the windows blow out. Right. Oh, now this is a great dream sequence here. Exactly. So that means she's falling asleep at a funeral? Yeah. So she's really upset. These kids are taking some hardcore drugs, dude. (laughs) I guess in the late 80s, they weren't addressing this kind of stuff. Well, at this point, MTV's only like four or five years old or something, right? When did MTV start? 83? 80. 80? Yeah. Oh, so it was nine years old. But I guess it wasn't so hip on uh, teens taking, what's the what's the uh, sleeping pill of choice? Some with an A. Ambien? Ambien. There's an Ambien epidemic at this at this school. <laughs> no, come on. They're all trying to stay awake, right? I exactly. guess. No dose. Chuck or crank. For real, dude. This guy's Christian later. <laughs> Peace out, dude. But that's a nice moment. I mean, it's Seriously. just a... But now, wait, this Chris is Lear more... Or, or uh, Skeet Ulrich uh, <laughs> on a bad day. Skeet Ulrich. This is the precursor to Skeet. But, this, you know, that would seem more of like a daydream, because if it was a dream, it might have been Freddy, and he would have done something scary. But it was just the guy, it was Christian later coming yeah. out and being like, okay, right, sis. Right, right, given his goodbyes. So was it more of a state of her, not in a dream sequence, but in a kinetic or psychic? Psychic, kind of emotional. Yeah. Here's an interior little uh window into her soul kind of thing gotcha and we've got the final three now yeah and now freddy with final three now we're at three more it's, look at this see Somewhere so right it's right there we're at that turning point and now we've probably got about what 35 minutes left to go yeah we're 30 yeah, 36. 36 so if there's three major characters left we're gonna get every 10 minutes eight minutes or so until the final big fight yep oh here we go foreshadowing right Take this 80s. Seriously, like, I think everyone had that bracelet. The I had that bracelet. I don't even know how I had that bracelet. <laughs> the studded bracelet. The studded bracelet. The 2 by 18 or whatever it is. I think Freddy was going around in dreams just putting on people, and then when they wake up, it'd be on him. Yeah. And, like, I know this guy, like, he isn't really in the movie that much. But <laughs> it's like, come on, dude. <laughs> he is kind of like your generic, like, 80s. Uh, Jock. Foot, football jock, exactly. you know, your generic jock. I, I don't know nowadays if the jock nerd dynamic is so uh, yeah. so black and white. It seems like there's more of kind of a meshing. Now look at this little metaphor. Give this movie credit for having Alice have a visual metaphor of her interior where the more pictures she strips away from the mirror, the more we see her totally. That's right. That's right. 
And I know it's a stupid horror movie, but you can do that kind of stuff. So this, and honestly, I did not even think of this when I was first watching it. It's only coming up right now. Yeah. But she's gaining and their now, powers. Exactly. And now we're showing another part where she's starting to adapt. And I guess the message is, okay, Freddy's going to be defeated by Kung Fu and uh, all these powers that's in the right. dream. So we're kind of... Now, wait, that's obviously a double right there, yeah? When we cut behind her, it's probably another actress. What yeah. dude in a wig. <laughs> that's Christian Later in a wig. <laughs> look at that. Let's look. look at the right color. It's not even red. There's no red tint. Look, red tint. Red tint. No okay, red no tint. red tint. Red tint. No red tint. That's not even close. But we cut to the music. I did think that this <laughs> was... Like, Renny's watching like, hey guys, whatever happened with that? Remember the 200 bucks on the window blow-off? <laughs> yeah. I forgot we were using that for the wig money. <laughs> <laughs> you spent the wig money! <laughs> what are you doing, <laughs> stupid? You spent the wig money! You ruined my movie! <laughs> <laughs> I think we have to do an Arnold impersonation every single commentary, no matter what. <laughs> Ready to <laughs> talk money. <laughs> what do you, you idiot? <laughs> this is now an Alan Smithy film. <laughs> that's right. Oh, that's funny. Uh, <laughs> wig money. <laughs> <laughs> I like your imitation. You like you got the funny. Like, hey, Randy. <laughs> you know the wind blow, window blow. <laughs> Bucks? I forgot. <laughs> like the PA who's going to be fired off exactly. the set for telling him the money. <laughs> oh, this, dad, this dad's pretty intense right here. I guess we also ran out of dad money. <laughs> <laughs> this guy just uh, phoned it in. Dude. This guy is a real dad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> They're like dad tryouts. They just posted it wherever they shot this. The city. <laughs> There was, like, there was probably like a guy picking up his kid at the school they were filming this. He's like, can you just come here and give this girl a talk? Dude, we need you for three scenes. Are you going to be available? Can't, do you have your own tux? Because we don't have a tux money for the funeral shot. Where'd you spend your money? Cut to <laughs> window. But did you see how cool it was? <laughs> that was worth it. That Seriously. Was... We even damaged the overhead projector, so it was an extra 50 bucks. Oh, here comes... Yes. Coming up is one of the great... Probably... So let's well let's set the whole thing up, right? Mm-hmm. So one of the probably the greatest kills mm-hmm. in Never Knows 3 4. But here we go with the awesome music. Sinead O'Connor. Sinead O'Connor. From Lion and the Cobra, the album before. I don't want what I haven't got. Which had nothing, nothing compares, compares to. to you. And this is an underrated song of hers. Yes. I think it's a very good song and a lot of people actually started getting it, you know, wanted to listen to find out who this was with this album, with this See? song. So Never Knows Street Part Four. Propheticizing the career Connor. of Sinead O'Connor and her Sinead later her SNL blow up, a rip up, a rip up of the picture of the Pope on SNL, which you could probably YouTube or something. Yes, would you Hulu? Oh, maybe? Let me cut. Would you could probably find on the internet. <laughs> I don't want to do any specific websites. Yes, you can go to your favorite website and watch it, and do a search for yes. Sinead O'Connor and do Pope a internet picture. search <laughs> on some <laughs> website dot com. <laughs> Yes. I like this. Reefer Madness. Reference to Reefer Madness and in Lost Marquee. Burning Youth. Was that the one on the left? Yeah, I've never seen that movie. All right, and is this going to be Robert England again? No. No. So she buys a ticket for a movie. Some of Blair's older sister. Now, if we want to go deep into the writing here, this might be a social commentary on how horror movies were perceived, where the adolescents would go to the theater and just be zombified and not... Oh, I, I guess yeah. I guess that ran out. <laughs> no, and they would go to the theater and they would be mindless zombies just watching these just isn't, overly isn't sensitized just, films. Isn't it just the whole movies in genre in general? Yeah, I guess there is that kind of attitude of do movies add anything or are they just escapism or are they exactly? But we have Reefer Madness, so there. I think there is Rennie Harlan and Brian Heglin are getting a little bit fancy here, are trying to like deepen it up a little bit at this moment. Okay. So I'm going to give it some credit. I'll have to write like a thesis on that later, but <laughs> this is awesome. And like the cut, right? So I, I don't, I don't think she fell asleep, right? No, she's just the hallucinating dream master. Exactly. So now we're in that like new, this whole new thing. So I guess that's what was. Could you say that's what was building up, like all these kind of inconsistencies in logic, 
are really super logic because she's the one whose powers are being unleashed. Exactly. In a lot of ways, this might be kind of like Carrie, like right. the um, mm-hmm. um, Brian De Palma horror movie where she's kind of developing these psychic powers. Right, psychic telekinetic. It's a lot less dramatic in that movie because it's all just kind of in the third act where she goes crazy and kills mm-hmm. everyone. But here Alice is slowly developing a hallucination, power, dream, reality stuff has been influencing everything. Exactly. Oh, there it is. There's the move from Total Recall. Everyone, I, you need it in every movie. Every movie. You need to get sucked Listen, into it. Listen, there needs to be Seriously. an amusement park ride where you hold on for life as something's sucking you towards That's something. Correct. I think, seriously, I think maybe if we go through all of our lists of our top 20 movies, every <laughs> single movie has a suck into it. Has, it has Seriously. a moment like that? I mean, that's a cool effect, too. I mean, it's not uh, it's, nice, it's yeah, a cool shot. Nicely filmed. And a cool little move there, how she gets sub. She's now in the movie. Yeah, and when she enters the screen, she goes down and in Correct. instead of, like, through it. That was exactly. that was nice. Again, this is creative, man. Yeah, this is good. It has a good show. And now everyone's dead that's cheering for her, right? Right. Exactly. Because of that wide shot. Very so creepy. <laughs> I like it. I like yeah, this a lot. Good stuff. This is a movie that tries, you know, it tries, it's part four, and it's beating out the previous movies that have come before it. Uh Maybe not in terms of, I mean, I don't think you're ever really, there are some scary parts here, but I mean, you're never like really creeped out, creeped out. No, I don't think so. Definitely just a a, a fun ride with Freddy. Fun ride, yeah. You gotta see some blood, you gotta get, you gotta have a couple jumps here and there. Mm Mm-hmm. But yeah, mostly it's just like, it's cool effects. Obviously, you know, we have the cool here with the blades. I like that she's cleaning the butter knives and it looks right. like the Freddy Claw. Because everyone cleans them just like that. <laughs> Perfectly spread them like that. <laughs> now, is this her in makeup? As an older I think it is, waitress? Right? I think it is, isn't it? Yeah. So who's so playing? Like look in her eyes. How like, are they look? doing this? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Uh-huh. So that means the uh, the cheapy wig is being used here. That's right. <laughs> the food doesn't kill you. The service this, the will. The service will. He's back. Love this here. The yes, pizza. The pizza. Ooh. Over the top, disgusting, but really effective. Right. Definitely. Bring me more. Now this is interesting. Right. So she can't control it, or what's what's the oh, logic think, here? Well, I think the logic is that she has she has so she's so powerful, she could link Freddy, you know, in her stasis with Freddy, he can jump into someone else's dreams. Yeah, being her friend. Look at that. Now, I honestly never hundred percent picked up on that until yeah. we're discussing it right now. Because I mean, it's the whole right thing. He bring me more because I yeah. need more people. So he's using her, because I was about to say that Freddy seems to kind of just be going through the motions, and like, I mean, everyone he's killing is in a cool way, yep. he's saying the great lines, but there's no like overall personal objective for him. Right. Until right now, where he's like, okay, I found someone. Right. And I think we're going to see this scene a couple times too, a la uh, Star Trek. Deja vu. Exactly. So, Star Trek Next Generation episode, fifth season, I don't know the number, I wish I did, just to be like, I'm super nerd, but... It is cause and effect. Cause and effect. Where the Enterprise keeps looping through right. a little time period and it can't and get until unstuck. They, until Picard does the right moves. Yeah. That's what happens, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which again, Hitchhiker is the same thing. There was a Hitchhiker episode where the guy, this guy and a girl in a car were trying to get away from this guy in a motorcycle. And you had, you know, and just kept doing the wrong moves. Yeah, yeah. So obviously it's been done before, but it's still, it's still a cool tactic. It is, and if you just if you put the right spin on it, I know the X Files did one where like there was a bank robbery, and uh, Scully or Mulder were in line at the bank, right? And there was like you know someone the looping was going on the way you broke it was like the person couldn't get shot. At. Yeah, I don't know right. exactly. Exactly, they're always something like that. So Alice and Jock thirty four B whatever yes. model, you know, just <laughs> the guy has no character or right. personality here. They're going to start driving around and constantly being looping back and forth. So that means she's still asleep and they're all in the dream? Or they're not in reality. No, I think, I think they're, uh, they're Alice is in reality. So how is Freddy but affecting Fre- the reality? But Freddy's somehow doing it. Well, Through I, her? I want to watch this break. Okay, this is your favorite <laughs> moment. Here we go. Oh! oh. That is so cute. Oh! 
And that's the power of practical effects, yes. not CG. Correct. No pain, no gain. No pain, no gain. Great line. Oh, 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 oh pain. Ooh. Yeah, I know. That would be oh. so weird. And then and now we cut back to, remember, in the opening scene where she's in the parking lot, the roach on the chips. And she so stomps the roach. The roach, yes. And that... That fly that and that's good logic because Freddy can get into your dreams and knows your fears and exactly. he uses your fears against you. Exactly. Now she's in the Roche Motel. Right. But well, we don't know it's the Roche Motel yet, right? Not yet. But I mean we could only assume. And so here we go again, where Alice is back at the house. I have to go check and I go through. And I remember specifically at this part where it's the third time, people groaned in the audience. Because they were like, oh, like, come on. Yeah. Can't you? And then we have that little break, like, have we done this before? Yeah. Comes up. So it's like the filmmakers at least know. Yeah, so, yeah, have, yeah have we done this before? So she, being the Dream Master, knows, is but, aware, but he's not. Also, isn't that the whole power of three in movies, like the three times? Yeah, do something three times. Right. And that that, that is the final time, right? Exactly, that's the third time. Yeah. It's a great, great little trick. So now we have, now we're trying to see more of what's happening, because now she can't move. Uh Uh-huh. Ooh, I remember this, yeah. Great shot. I love that shot. Very aliens to me. Uh Uh-huh. Ooh, and and it just, ugh. This is almost like David Cronenberg the fly also. Exactly. So, yeah. Ugh. Scream at George again. Oh, I guess we do. They're going back for a fourth time. This is. Fourth time. But, you know, in the the same way. this, but the break of, yeah, see. Yeah. Now she knows she's been doing it before. But we also, in the audience, we feel as frustrated as they do. Right. Oh, well, like, yeah, you can go do that as well. Again, with the groans in the audience, like, oh my gosh. Yeah, like... Yeah. And I just, yeah, it's so awesome that she turned into a... I mean, yeah. we just watched her turn into a cockroach. Exactly. Again, dude. Love the eye. Screw man, George, you gotta give it up for that. <laughs> came with it on this one. Here we go. <laughs> Check in, but you can't check out. And then I like on his sleeve when he crushes this. Yeah, the goop. Goop. Ah. Oh. And then she gets affected because now she knows the person's dead. And she has the powers now. Right. Cause, so she's connected to this. Yes. The powers of what? Bench pressing <laughs> 85 pounds? <laughs> yeah. And and being a prissy uh, high school <laughs> like, queen bee or something. Uh, great, great hair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, great 80s. Uh, Blowouts. <laughs> <laughs> And we have, oh, uh, but it's a tree. Yes. So she was driving while she was asleep. And I think at this point, all bets are off, dude. All bets are off. So just the reality of sleep and dream has just yes. The the Another lines cool effect with the no tree smash. I like that effect too. Like you're saying, dude, they came with it in this mm-hmm. movie. That's good. And it, again, like the by the time you're doing a fourth movie, it's like. Oh boy, what can we do that we haven't seen already? And this mm-hmm. movie actually manages to, to do that. It perfects a lot of things and mm-hmm. feeds off of the third one. Yep. And it really kind of comes into its own. That it had Ohio plates, so maybe it was filmed somewhere in Ohio. Look at you, a master of details. That's right. So, Freddy versus Jason real quick. Let's talk about that. Oh, yeah. You so you didn't want to talk about that? No. Okay, here's my opinion, is that... I guess who else's opinion would it be? But <laughs> Freddy vs. Jason, 2002 or three? I believe it's 2003. And it's just a movie that is basically 13 years too late. Mm. Because right around this time, Freddy Part 4, we're having Jason Part 7. Mm-hmm. Remember with the telekinetic? That's the kind of blood. a guilt, guilty pledge. The new blood. So both of them are arguably at their peak. So... Having a great Freddy vs. Jason movie would have been 1990, 1989, right. somewhere around there, 91 even. Right. But, okay, fine. I think it was the studios, right? It was Paramount on one, New Line on the other. Correct. They can't come together. Today would be no problem because studios are always co-financing movies now. Exactly. And, okay, fine, we have to wait for the rights to go and then Paramount. Is it Paramount or New Line bought them all? Or what? Yeah, I think New Line. Yeah, so they own all the rights. So now... People are going to recognize the name, so let's just come up with something. And it's like, okay, so f- actually, now that we're looking at Nightmare on Street Part 4 with this Alice being the Dream Master, in a lot of ways there's a similarity where Freddy uses Jason to to bring people 
into him so he can kill them to get more power. Yeah. Okay. But Jason starts killing them instead, so he can't. Freddy can't use them. You know, it's like Freddy's about to kill someone, and Jason kills him in reality. Oh, okay. So Freddy's in the dream world. Right. Jason is in the real world. world. And it's uh, it's all right. It's kind of like the Lost alternate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It goes Jason to X. Lost. Jason X. <laughs> Freddy X. LAX Jason X. Exactly. So we get the. Uh, Oh, here's the copyrighted effect noise. <laughs> yeah, and it's just it's mainly Freddy and it's the when they fight at the end it's it's okay. I mean, there's some decent kills. It's pretty bloody. Yeah. But it was just, you know, you could just tell it was okay. It was made because it would make some money. Right. But again, part four, part five of Nightmare on Elm Street, why are they being made? Because they're going to make money. Well, also, let's also remember that Friday the 13th, the Jason goes to hell. Yeah. The final shot. That's Yeah, with the glove, with the glove right? Yeah. That's like 1994-ish, 93. And that was just toying with us, right? I remember watching that theater. We're like, yeah, this is going to be awesome. So the glove comes out, grabs the mask. It should have been right after that. Yeah, that would have been a perfect lead-in. Like, you know, three months. That would have been great. But, of course, they waited and waited and figured, okay, we can make some money. We'll do it now. So it was uninspired. It was just done. And, again... Hollywood is a great blend of commercial and art. It's, if you want to see an art film, watch something foreign. Okay, here we have kind of the culmination of her character growth. Correct. So now she's, she has stuff from everybody. So she kind of has all of her abilities. She's ready to rock and roll. She's she, taking the pictures she has, off. She has the gadget from uh, Miss Urkel. Miss Urkel. She's got you know the little headband turned into a little fist protector. From Christian later. From Christian later. We have uh, the bracelet, or the belt, the belt, the stud belt. The stud belt uh, from Roach Motel. From Roach Motel. <laughs> Seriously, it's like uh, uh, Jesse Spano or something. Je- Jesse Spano, dude. <laughs> Jesse Spano and uh, Lisa, what's their character's name? Lark, Lark Vore, he's his character. Oh, Lark, oh my gosh, it's all Saved by the Bell. Dude. It's, it's Saved by the Bell. Seriously, that's like Christian Slater right now. Oh, here we have another line. So Freddy's like the nurse twice? Oh god, Dr. Seuss line. Well, it ain't Dr. Seuss. Well, it ain't Dr. Seuss. And she can see in the mirror. Right. Here we go. She kicks through. Isn't that the same line from Aliens, pretty much? It is. It is. Ripped the line off from Aliens. So we've had the roach side shot, which pretty much looked like Aliens. And now we actually have a line pulled from Aliens. (laughs) So, Renny Harlan, we know your secret. <laughs> Renny. I'm going to call James Cameron. I'm talking to you. <laughs> I'm talking to you. <laughs> so she goes in to save her boyfriend. And now she has she's become an empowered character. Seriously. They they blew the mud the budget on the Roach Motel. <laughs> the Roach Motel and the window explosion. Seriously. Hey, do you have any barrels? <laughs> <laughs> Do you have any big barrels that like maybe we can cut some holes into and put some lights from the outside? And for some reason, Freddy's gonna spin them because oh, yeah, okay, he's the barrels. <laughs> and he's got to look around yeah, at it. Oh, it's classic. It's a cool. I mean, it's a cool visual. Yeah. Again, Renny Harlan's bringing the visuals oh, to good. us. And little stained glass break, classic. I do like that stunt work right Into there. The church, yep. Great stunt work. So we're at one eighteen fifteen seconds right now. We're at sixteen minutes left. Yep. We're getting so down he's to her. starting to feel a little weird. Because he's back in the operating room. And right. and this is really well written because she has to fight Freddy on her own. She can't have of anybody course. helping her. Yep. Just as much as in Alien since we brought it up. <laughs> Ripley can't... He pulls it back to the future fade. <laughs> it's like every... It's seriously, all bets are off for the, like, the transitions <laughs> from death to reality to death. Like, there's so much crazy stuff. Yeah, there's a little inconsistent. This always bugged me for some reason. The way he kind of comes up, he's like, "Don't worry, son, you're gonna make it." And it's like just this at a widescreen lens just makes I, his face. I think look it was kind of like a play on the front, you know, because like similar, but it wasn't not similar to Freddy. I know what you mean. Yeah, it was always a weird kind of thing. Yeah. Here we bring the choir back. That's a great little shot. Classic. And just and we have a horror movie here where a female character has undergone a change and grown. Yep. Why not? Welcome to Wonderland. Alice. Alice. Freddy and his lines. 
Yeah. And it, it, every shot when he says the line, it's per, it's filmed just like an action movie. It where is, you know, it is. The nice close up. We have some great lighting. And here we go. Karate time. Yep. Oh, and the crazy walk. Remember that? <laughs> the fast, fast Freddy walk. Okay. Kick in the face. <laughs> Kick in the face. Punch in the face. And punch all I do is gut, keep laughing at you. Slash in the face. His makeup is really his makeup is really good here. It is good, but it's not scary. It's more of just yeah. You know, yes, we know he's a burn victim, but it's just yeah. There's it's there's just layers to it. I think. Mm Mm-hmm. Slash, jump over, kick in the face, kick in the gut. But again, it's the dream world. I mean, he can do whatever he wants. Exactly, Exactly. We, have, we actually have a little bit of conversation here. Mm-hmm. You've got their powers. I've got their souls. Exactly. Come on. Yeah, let's give them credit for uh, choreographing a fight on the pews, on the top yeah, of them. It actually kind of works. We get, except you don't have any wide, very few wide shots. Yeah, so... Because uh, at that point, it's a dark-haired wig. <laughs> Christian Later is uh, stepping in for... <laughs> Seriously. Christian right. Later and, and 50 bucks. <laughs> Why are we ragging on him so much? He's trying to do a good job. Who, Christian Later? Christian Later. He's trying to do his job. No, come on, man. Oh, this pop up behind. Yep. And now he's like trying to get her on his side, right? Yeah. Little seduction here. <laughs> so that's good. Freddie, he's stepping away from the one liner for a moment. Mm. He just whips her. <laughs> he just rips her over. Can okay, I just so kick up? I think somebody. The wind machine. Do that, <laughs> and then we have the wind machine. Wind machine. And that's kind of like a wild, wild west thing, right there, like a western where he's got the gun at the side. Exactly. Oh, what is he? What is he scared of her bracelet? I think she has a fist. <laughs> oh no, she's gonna use the nerd device. Exactly. Oh, what is she? Supercharging it. Supercharge, and for some reason that affects him here. So this is like Star Trek uh, Best of Both Worlds Episode 2 I thought you guys a conspiracy with the um, head explosion Mr. Worf Fire <laughs> <laughs> And then just like whoop Gotcha I, I like that I like that a yeah. lot and that, and that was another groan in the audience on that one I remember Oh like, really? Yeah, it was like oh, like we did, he, She did all that awesome work yeah, and he just to. fixes himself like exactly. that. So it's a dream. how can so you, when you're watching this, you're like, okay, you're doing these kicks on him, or you can use high powered laser, and nothing's gonna hurt him. <laughs> high powered laser, seriously, like Lady Oracle knows how to make high powered lasers. <laughs> Lady Oracle. <laughs> so what? A, oh, okay. Now this is even all bets are totally off here. Exactly. She gets a piece of the stained glass. Yep. Take a look at yourself. So Freddy's never looked in the mirror? Um, it's very possible he's never done that. And here we have a colonoscopy of uh, Freddy. With, <laughs> oh, that's good. We got some tumors who are... Good. <laughs> so now it's just, you know, all the souls are going to get out of Freddy's body. And we have some great great effects here awesome effects. where these effects are those are real hands everything's just zoomed up you know everything's to scale it's like a huge yeah, that, huge wall that part's a puppet when freddy's fighting mm-hmm. the little hands that's a little puppet but the ones that like where they come out of his skin yeah are just full on those are real people real going people. through yeah. i actually remember that doc- part of the documentary yeah. and so it's a little great setup here one out of the head. There's the head one. Oh, Pulled it's so... Oh. Yeah, it's very, very cool. So creepy. And then we have the great, great chest coming up here. There we go. People coming out. Uh-huh. Yep. It was awesome. It's like three people through this like rubber, great little rubber. Uh-huh. It just really works. And that's a great shot there, too. I mean... It's like puppet, and then it like it cuts, and this is like real people. Mm-hmm. Puppet again. Yeah, it's great shots. Very well done. Yeah, good stuff. And, Ma- imaginative, and, and imaginative, and scary. Yeah, it's just like that's really this. It's almost it's a little disturbing. Like it, all these bodies coming out, you know, and then like this great. Oh, thing. and then his head gets ripped. The head ripped apart. Glass oh. breaks. 
Souls Escape. And comparing it to the previous movies, it's like, okay, how are you going to kill Freddy? Right. First one, he gets burned. Mm-hmm. Second one, he gets burned. Third one, buried with all the holy water and exactly. religious artifacts. Yep. And now, this was great. Yeah. Now it's like, does he really have anything left because the souls have escaped? You know, yeah. Where, where does he have his power from now? So maybe he really is dead. I believe he... And this is the last one of the franchise. Here it is. That's it. Watching, yeah, that's... All that other stuff, it's just... Everything we said? We made it up. Uh, I think a- those other ones are sweeted. April Fool's. <laughs> April Fool's. <laughs> Joke's on you. <laughs> no more Freddy's. I think the rest of them were uh, Jack Black and Most Def. <laughs> That's right, they were. <laughs> Look what you've done to our hood. <laughs> I like that movie. Uh, be Kind Rewind. Yeah, Be Kind Rewind if you haven't got the reference. It's a movie with a lot of heart. Maybe not the crispest story structure, right. but it's got a lot of heart and some good ideas to it. And... and the Michel Gondry, his great art direction, yeah. his, his shoot, his shots, fantastic. And it's probably like the ultimate recent movie comment on the whole remake craze and mm-hmm. movies with heart and originality versus just churn it out, churn it out, and making things that we already know, so that we'll pay for them again because they're familiar exactly. instead of challenging us with something new. Right. All right, and so generic... just to wrap up, so we're we're right almost at the end here. We're at 126.06, and uh, Freddy's dead. All so, the souls are gone. All the souls are gone. Great. That was a, that was a really great climax. Oh, no, it was good. Great visual set piece, delivered on genre. But what what is everybody waiting for right now? We're waiting for some kind of Freddy reference. The teaser, the clue. The teaser for part five. Flicks the coin. Oh, Ooh, a little bit of Freddy. His image in the water. And then the, the ripples, and he's gone. But she's been hallucinating the whole movie, so why would she... Right. But, he... now, she, but, but now she feels like, no, I, I defeated him. Yeah. He's so. gone. Oh, crap. He's yeah. coming back. Why? Because this movie makes exactly. $80 million or right. whatever it is. Exactly. Because this will make enough. And there, it doesn't cost a ton, I'm sure. Yeah. So we can make another one. And then we have Sinead O'Connor's music again, right? Yes. I really feel like this movie created more of a merchandise craze for Freddy. Mm-hmm. I really yes. don't remember a lot of his stuff in, being yeah, around. Freddy became marketable yeah. easily. Yeah. I mean, weren't there like Freddy lunchboxes at one point? Lunchboxes, uh, squirting gun head yeah. stuff. Yeah. I, I own a bunch heads. of stuff. I squirt mean, heads. The Freddy yeah. squirt heads. We, we bought a bunch of stuff. Because oh, yeah. shirts. I mean, you can find posters. shirts for the first movies, but I mean, shirts, that posters, that was all kinds of stuff. Every stand-ups. Yep. All that stuff. So this really kind of ultimately cashed in Freddy. Definitely. He became very marketable at this point. But at the same time, it was really his peak. Yeah. It's true. Because after this, part five, six, seven, it's mm-hmm. pretty much a downhill slope. You kind of reach this, that genre life cycle where it really, after this, what do you do? You're going to, if you can't keep reinventing and keeping it fresh, you're going to get fall into parody. Mm-hmm. And you're going to reuse the same set pieces and get tired and yeah. that's what Craven in Part 7 was trying to like comment on, do something a little different. Right, with like a parody, but not a parody. Really yeah. Kind of in there. Like a sarcastic, uh, satire sort of deconstruction, if you will. Yeah, okay, but, I'll, deconstruction, yeah, that's a good word for it. Yeah, I just, I, I used the thesaurus app to look. <laughs> just now. What, what, can I, what kind of word can I use? <laughs> so uh, there you have it, there, there's Nightmare on Elm Street 4, if you haven't been actually watching the movie and just listening. Uh, that's we're at, we're at the credits. We're at the credits. <laughs> uh, great, great movie. Yeah. I think I'm gonna have to agree. My favorite out of the whole original franchise. It, it is. It is. I, I like I like parts of three, like parts of one, but overall four. And I mean that just went by so fast. It did. Like it's just like nonstop. Okay, dream sequence. You know, there's a couple little things here and there, but just to set up. You know, more plot lines down the future. It was no, like, just wasting. Mm-hmm. It was definitely nothing being wasted at that point. Yeah, and even when it was just the human characters, there was some decent relationships, and it was very much focusing on Alice's storyline. Mm-hmm. That I'm this kind of shy girl, I have this kind of ability, who knows if it's a metaphor for being a woman and coming into puberty and all that kind of stuff, 
But she really, you know, those pictures on the mirror. I'm going to say it again. That mm-hmm. it, it seems kind of cheesy, but it's just a nice, yeah. simple and visual. And what did it take? It took for everyone to die, for that screen to be revealed, and for her to bust through it and fight Freddy. You know, that that the climax scene starts with that, mm-hmm. where he sees is the you know now two and old dude. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, the, good stuff. So that's the original franchise in part four, and we. Kind of, I don't know. I, I can't say I'm looking forward to the remake, but I'm, I'm curious. still on the fence. I mean, if I, I it's oh, man, I, I'm gonna wait for some early reviews to come out, and I want to hear how his performance is. Yeah, I'm sure it's just gonna be just a blood fest, but ho- hopefully it'll be something exciting. So the the make or break aspect of the remake for you is gonna be is gonna be Freddy. It's gonna be Freddy. Yep. And the performance... I mean, is it going to be the one-liners? Is it going to be just... It's going to be the totally opposite, where he's not going to say anything? You know, I just... Um, I, I, we'll see. We'll see. Yeah. And I think my vote's going to be... Here's what I think's going to happen. This kind of quick preview review is going to be that... Because it's Platinum Dunes, because they did Friday the 13th, The Hitcher, Texas Chainsaw, mm-hmm. and they all made money... Yep. They're going to keep going with what works, and they're going to take all the iconic moments from the first two movies, mm-hmm. and make sure they're all in there, and they're going to, just like you said, they're going to keep it dark, mm-hmm. keep it, get the strobe lights in there, <laughs> uh, keep the editing crisp, yep. and hopefully... Can you take out every eighth frame? Yeah. <laughs> Let's say this feels a little bit too boring. Yeah. There's only a cut every, every four seconds, <laughs> and it... The key is going to be, are they going to be able to focus on Freddy as a character and another human character? Because you had Nancy in the first one. And there were some really decent moments when, like, she's arguing with her mother about, why didn't you tell us about Freddy? What did you do? And, like, the parents are irresponsible. And you know, she you know, she was believable enough as a character. And here, I mean, just watching it now, I really like Alice's journey here. It's nothing too... Um, I don't know, revolutionary, but it's very simple and straightforward. But by the end, she really becomes someone who's empowered and is able to defeat this guy. Mm-hmm. I think the temptation is going to be, just like in Friday the 13th, the remake, okay, you're going to get the teens right. that are from the CW. Yep. And they're going to put them in this movie, and they're going to look really good on screen. Right. There's probably going to, they're going to jack up the nudity, yep. or you know, the sexuality of it, right. get, throw some drugs in there. I mean, it's a, it's the typical genre set pieces of the horror, of every horror true, movie, true. right? But I think the temptation is going to be just to focus on that and not go to the character. Where in the first movie you had Nancy, the first two movies was Nancy's story, mm-hmm. and then this movie was about Alice's story. Yep. And yeah, Freddy's really interesting. And what happens in the original franchise is that Freddy's backstory comes out the more movies you make, right? Because that it's like where else do you go? Mm-hmm. Okay, fine. We introduce this cool character, but. Now people want to know about him. So here's the factory. His mom was right. a nun who got raped and all this kind of stuff. Yep. So in a lot of these remakes, what they do is just let's include that backstory earlier. Gotcha. Let's make that in the first movie. Yep. And if it already feels in the previews that they're just kind of cutting right to that. Yep. So it, I'm not excited about it, but I'm curious. It's, I mean, it really comes down to like the problem with The Simpsons for like, the last you know, 10 seasons. Just no heart. And now when I say way no heart, I just say, like, there's just, like, it's just the phoning it in aspect, you know? And it's just like, we're obviously we're making the movie, but we're making it for the money. We're not making it to tell the story. Yeah. We just want, our, our main goal is cash, and everything else is just secondary. Totally. You know, and that's what you're getting now with these holidays. I'm going to give it some hope, but we'll see what happens. Yeah. It's yeah. probably, it's... You know, it's, I I think I just want it to be good. I do too. I I, yeah. I really do. I do. Yeah, but I, it's probably not gonna be. Yeah, because I mean, for me, I think there's Freddy and like Pinhead is kind of in the same neighborhood of like trying to be that kind of a personality slasher. Mm-hmm. And then you have like your Shocker, Horace Pinker kind of guys. <laughs> and then you have your Jason and your Michael Myers. Child's play. Thing? Child's play. Chucky. Chucky's yeah. another Freddy, basically, where he's got the right. lines and all that. So. Freddy, I think, was like this fun one Death line. Row game show? What's that? <laughs> Death Row Game Show. <laughs> <laughs> Death Row. Do a search for that Death Row Game Show. There's yeah. go on your that... favorite internet computer and find it. <laughs> and, yeah, <laughs> internetsearchengine.com. <laughs> hey, you can, I don't think you can say that. You know what? I wonder if is that a, what I'm sure that domain has been bought. I'm sure it has been. 
What do you use? I use internet search. <laughs> don't, app. don't upload this before you've checked. Though. <laughs> I'm gonna buy that. <laughs> yes, buy it first. That's pen this pending. Is, this is the great. <laughs> that'll be like six months from now. Like I'll get like a comment. <laughs> Hey, that was a great idea. I just sold it for uh, $2 billion to Google. <laughs> Pat. Pat, Pat. Pat intending. Uh, so, hopeful for Freddy. I mean, it's just it just feels like, you know, these these part, these part movies that were special for our childhood, right. they're obviously going to be remade now. Just keep the heart. I'll accept it. Yeah. But if not, it, it, it's just like, you know, it just kind of feels a little bit disrespectful in some ways. Definitely. But I, I'm I'm with you. I want it to be good. I hope they can do it. I hope they learn from the other movies that they failed at. Yep. And uh, platinum dunes. Just try to be gold, gold standard, right? Just try to be all right. So, all right. Well, we love we love '80s Freddy. That's right. All right, Uncle C. It's been fun again. Second commentary. Glad, glad to be here. We we'll have to start doing some kind of remote session. Yeah, we have to somehow. Future. This, I mean, this flew by. Yeah. This was great. All right, so please leave some thoughts. What do you think about the Nightmare on Elm Street remake and uh, Part Four or the original franchise? And we're done here. That's it. So until next time, long live good movies. Peace out.